Doing the concrete floors, I put two and a half inches of rigid foam underneath the concrete floor plus stone. We dug down four, almost five feet for this foundation. I didn't have to, I just wanted to make a superstructure. This floor was hand troweled by RCC, that's their concrete division of the same guys that did the waterproofing on the outside of this beautiful sunroom. This floor is about six inches thick. It is solid, they hand troweled it, it is perfection. I can't believe they did this well with the floor. So think about it, here's the ICF, direct drywall over top of it, two more inches of foam on the outside of the already two and a half inches, which makes four and a half inches of foam on the outside of the structure. Thermal broken in the floor, spray foamed in the ceiling, all hidden behind the drywall right now because that's scissor trusses. These are gonna be fake beams. This is now so airtight that when I turn on this fireplace, it's gonna create a negative air. And now what that's going to do is want to pull all kinds of air out of this room, but it can't pull it because it's airtight, so what did we do? We installed an ERV, and not just any ERV, this is state of the art, this just came on the market. This is the Panasonic Whisper Comfort 60. What is great about this being a standalone unit, I run two lines, one at least six feet away from the exhaust and intake. So those two lines gives me fresh air in, stale air out, making this room exactly what it's supposed to be. Two filters on this. We can clean the air, bring in fresh air, take out the stale air, clean that air, and at the same time, we'll have a switch on the wall over here that I can run it at 30%, 100%, turn it off if I don't want it on, but normally you want to keep it on and let it run very quietly. It runs at about, I think it's 57 watts. It's not a lot of power, and that's on high. That's why they call it the Whisper Comfort. Having an ERV in a structure like this is just a no-brainer. You wanna make something airtight, you gotta be able to have fresh air come in and stale air go out. That little unit right there is everything. When it comes to the doors and windows, I was very particular on what I wanted. What I was looking for was a commercial door. Here's a four foot glass door. It is commercially made. This is an eight foot tall by 12 foot wide door. There are two of them, one on each end. The benefits of this, and I got this from Trimbo, and that's Dominic, you know Dominic. Trimbo brought in Trimark, who makes this commercial product. Think of it as a condo building, all the windows and doors all the way down, or a curtain wall, that's what they do. It's a little expensive, but in superior, you've gotta look at this as just how long it's going to last, a lifetime. They're so strong, the door opens up easily on its own, we'll close back in. The rest of the doors right now are plastic up because we're plastering on the inside and we're doing this foam and stucco on the outside. This will stand not only the test of time, it'll take on huge storms and that's what I wanted. We're only getting worse weather as it comes. When you put in commercial doors and windows, it's going to be stronger in the elements of weather. I want it to last, simple as that. Why did I choose ICF for my sunroom? I have some very specific reasons. Rigid foam on the outside, rigid foam on the inside, held together by webs, interior. Then we'll put in our rebar, horizontal, vertical, and above to create a lintel to pour in 35 MPA concrete to make a solid structure. I get great R value. It's airtight, because it's a thermal break and not a thermal barrier. I can screw drywall right to the inside, and on the outside, I'm actually going to add two inches of rigid foam, and it's, it's from uh, Durarock. It's gonna be foam and stucco. It's going to try and complement the rest of the house. That's our goal, is to create the same look, that it just, it melds into my home at the same time. Desano and his boys are here. They're just doing the prep coats on top of the ICF. They'll do a bare coat on top for the new foam that's going in place. It has a puck system on the back. And you can see this clearly. This is the bottom piece. This is how they start. It's the starter strip. So it's finished all the way around to the bottom side. And then you'll see the puck feature that when you put up the adhesive on the wall, it bonds to the wall directly to the foam, but it's over top of the protected layer. They'll apply this right over top of the protected layer that bonds to the foam. This is just brilliant. Adding two more inches of a thermal break on the outside of two and a half inches of existing foam already, 
just gives me such a high R value that when that cold winter tries to come in, it won't. And when I want to keep it nice and cool in the summer, it will stay inside. Benefits of what we do. That ICF is a superstructure. It will take high winds. Of course, when we did the roof line and all the rafters, they're scissor trusses. I'll show you that from the inside. We then spray foamed all of the inside, making a complete envelope all the way around of a thermal break. I want to try and keep it warm because it's only heated by a gas fireplace.